All right, welcome. So in this video, we are gonna state Kramer's rule and apply it and see how we can use it to solve a system of linear equations. Um, so before I state it, let's just motivate it with a concrete example. So let's say I am working with the system of two linear equations. Equation one is 3x1 minus 2x2 is equal to six. Uh, the second linear equation is minus 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 8. And so this system of linear equations has a coefficient matrix that I'll denote A, right, whose first row would be 3 minus 2 and whose second row would be minus 5, 4. And then we've discussed um, what notation we can use when we want to explain what happens when I take one of the columns of matrix A and replace it with this column vector 6, 8 that corresponds to the constants on the right side of this uh, system of equations. So we introduce this notation that A1, B is the matrix that we get when I take out row one of matrix A and replace it with 6, 8. And I don't do anything to column two. And then a sub two b is what I get when I leave column one alone, but now I'm gonna replace column two of matrix A with six, eight. So we're gonna need these ingredients um, when we state Kramer's rule. So I wanna be sure that um, you are clear with what this notation a sub one b means and a sub two b means in general. So if you're comfortable with that, now we can state Kramer's rule more generally. So if I have a n by n square matrix A, which we assume is invertible, and I take any vector B in Rn, um, first of all, since A is invertible, then we know that the matrix equation Ax equals B is gonna have a solution for every B, and that solution is gonna be unique. And now Kramer's rule gives us a shortcut for finding out what the solution X is. Um, namely, the ith entry in this column vector of solutions is going to be given by the determinant of the matrix that we get when we replace column i of matrix A with uh, vector B. And we're going to divide that by the determinant of the original matrix A. So let's see what that would look like for this example. So I want to solve this system of two linear equations using Kramer's rule. So I'm gonna to need to know what is the determinant of A and what is the determinant of A sub I B for I equals one and two in this case, because we have uh, two linear equations. So again, here's matrix A. We have matrix A sub one B and matrix A sub two B. And what Kramer's rule says is I just need to calculate the determinant of each of these matrices and use that information accordingly. So um, the determinant of matrix A, we can verify is two. I would get 12 minus 10. That's where the two comes from. The determinant of matrix A sub one B is gonna be 24 plus 16, and that gives us 40. And then the determinant of A sub two B is gonna be uh, 24, right, plus 30, and that gives me 54. And so now that I've calculated these three determinants, Kramer's rule gives us a shortcut to find the solution, namely x1 is gonna be the determinant of a1b, which is 40, divided by the determinant of a, which is two. And x2, is going to be the determinant of a sub 2b, which we found to be 54, divided by the determinant of a, which we found to be 2. So in other words, the solution x here is uh, 20, 27. And you can verify, you should practice um, plugging this solution into the system of equations above and just check that they work out. Um, but here we were able to solve this system of linear equations entirely by calculating determinants. I found three determinants and that was all I needed to do to find this solution. So um, Kramer's rule works out really nicely 
when n is small, when I have a system of two equations or maybe a system of three equations, but don't get too excited. I'll caution you that um, when the matrix A gets large, when you start to get four, five, six, seven, a system of seven equations, eight equations, um, this is probably not going to be an ideal method for you because calculating determinants of large matrices involves a lot of calculations um, in themselves.